Hello, so in this video of anatomy and physiology, we're going to be talking about plantar fasciitis or plantar fasciosis. So as I speak of the, the, the issue of plantar fasciitis, I think it's important to have a, an appropriate context to uh, what causes this and how you can fix it. So we're going to take a look at the muscles that are inside of the foot. These muscles all help to stabilize uh, the plantar fascia or basically the whole foot uh, when you're walking and running. So let's take a look at the most uh, profundal muscles in the foot. Let's go ahead and start off with our plantar interossei. So these are the muscles that are inside the bones in, in between each of these uh, metatarsals here. Okay. So let's look at the dorsal end of the foot now, and as you might imagine, the dorsal interossei. So again, these are the real profundal uh, muscles in the foot. And we have here now our third layer of muscles. Uh, I should mention that there are four layers of muscles and we're starting from the deepest layer to the more superficial layers. So the next layer coming up, uh, we're going to just discuss a few of these uh, of these muscles here. So this is your flexor hallucis brevis. Okay, so these are all flexor muscles that bring in, bring in the foot, that curl it up. Okay, your opponent's digiti minimi, your adductor hallucis. Now these are your flexor muscles. Let's take a look at the extensor muscles. Okay, let me bring this down a little bit. Okay, these are your extensor digitorum brevis. And then moving your big toe is your extensor hallucis brevis. Okay, in layer number three, we're gonna talk of um, just a couple of uh, muscles here. This is your quadratus planti. Okay, and then your lumbricals. So now the most superficial layer of muscles. Okay, these are the muscles uh, for me that when I get, I mean, I don't even have to have plantar fasciitis to, to feel these because after a long hike or a long run, these are the ones that are typically the most sore for me and I need to actually kind of massage massage out. So here you have just, just, uh, just above the plantar fasciitis or plantar fascia, you have your uh, flexor digitorum brevis, okay? Then you have your uh, adductor hallucis. This, this is on the medial aspect of the foot. Okay. And then on the lateral aspect of the foot, you have your adductor digiti minimi. Okay, so here we have the star of the of the video here is your plantar fasciae. The plantar fasciae has its origin on the proximal ends uh, of your phalanx of the foot, of the toes. Okay, so this is where the uh, the point of origin is, and its insertion is in the medial aspect of the calcanus. Okay, so here's your calcanus, that's your heel. Okay, and then here is where your fasciae will insert. Okay, so the muscles that I've mentioned before, and with uh, the plantar fasciae, these are all the ones, well, you can also, you can also include your, um, your Achilles and other muscles in the legs. This is what helps stabilize the foot. This is what you would call the arch of the foot. Okay? So when we do uh, biomechanical studies, it's been shown that 14% uh, of the overall load that your body takes, takes in, your weight or whatever you're carrying, is taken up by the plantar fasciae. So as you can imagine, this particular uh, uh, anatomical feature, this uh, connective tissue, the collagen, uh, it takes on quite a bit of uh, a load and punishment throughout the day as you're walking around carrying stuff, running, jogging, hiking, playing basketball, uh, you name it. Uh, in cadavers, when this particular tissue has been stressed, to see how much stress it can withhold, um, whenever it has ruptured under stress test, it's typically ruptured on the proximal end of the calcaneus, right about here. So, you know, Coincidentally, this happens to be the location of uh, the most intense pain when somebody gets plantar fasciitis. So, you know, this this shows how this part of this aspect of the uh, plantar fasciae structurally uh, is the weakest and usually ends up having the most stress uh, and strain uh, when you have this injury. So, in conjunction with your Achilles heel, uh, all these parts of the foot of the of the lower leg. Uh, aid in conserving energy. They work as springs, so when you're running or, or walking, they, they tighten up and then they, 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 they coil and then they allow uh, the person to propel forward. 
So your Achilles, your plantar, your hip flexors, all of these ligaments, they, they, uh, they work as a spring to, uh, to provide the energy needed to, uh, to move forward. So if all of these components are working properly, uh, you'll have less activation of muscles, you'll have less stress, strain in the muscles, and lower risk of injury. Proper biomechanics uh, show that up to 70% of the energy uh, that is used when you're doing one of these activities is actually returned via the stress, um, via the stress contraction or reflex. So the cause is not completely understood, uh, but understanding the physiology and the physics of the foot and how and how it works when somebody's running gives us hints as to the uh, as to how this happens and how one can prevent such an injury. Uh, overstress, overstress of the tissue, weak foot muscles like the ones that we've described in this video, poor running, biomechanics. So the plantar, um, plantar fasciitis, uh, fasciitis gives an indication that it might be a swelling or an inflammation of the uh, tissue, but that's not necessarily what's happening. The more accurate term would be plantar fasciosis. Uh, this, this indicates that the uh, tissue is not inflamed, but it's actually a degenerative tissue issue. Uh, the fibers, if you would, if you can imagine a string of uh, fibers or spaghetti running parallel next to each other, all in the same direction, what happens is uh, that these fibers, when, when, they're, when you have plantar fasciosis, these fibers get tangled up, kind of like a knotted rope, and they run in any which direction, and, and this is mainly the cause of this uh, of this uncomfortable uh, sharp pain that you feel at the bottom of your foot. So one of the issues, uh, or one, one of the causes, as we mentioned before, with uh, plantar fasciosis is, uh, you know, countered, uh, it's a little counterintuitive and counter to what you may have been hearing, uh, but extra cushion shoes, they, extra cushion shoes disrupt the kinetic chain uh, in the foot uh, muscles and tendons. Uh, this this extra cushion uh, creates a less less integrity on the foot. They weaken the they weaken the muscles in the foot, and they also cause the uh, the connective tissue to become more lax. Uh, and again, this this lessens the integrity of this foot when you're running or or walking, uh, especially running or hiking when you are putting a lot of stress on those ligaments. And if they don't have the proper strength, then you're going to have strain and pain and discomfort. Orthotics disrupt the kinetic chain of the foot, starting with the big toe, because orthotics typically are, are pretty stiff and they don't allow for the proper flexation of the foot, causing the, the ligaments to stretch like they should and the muscles, to, the muscles in the foot to be worked. So, you know, you might, you might even run with, uh, if you run with high, high cushion shoes or orthotics, you can be running uh, many miles on the road or on the trails and still have a very weak foot. So uh, running properly, if, if kinetic chain is working properly with your Achilles, your plantar fascia, your, your foot muscles, your leg muscles, all muscles and tendons are aided uh, and uh, you're running with the most efficient uh, running economy. So things like rice, as we've heard before, and fixing plantar fasciosis, you know, your rest, eyes, compression, uh, elevation. Uh, Fixing plantar fasciosis, uh, you might act, you're going to have to take a, uh, a uh, counterintuitive uh, approach to this, actually unbracing the foot, taking off the orthotics, re-strengthening, and walking on the foot. Now, uh, getting back on your feet is actually the best thing you can do for plantar fasciosis. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean running, but at the very least, walking on your foot. That way your foot can uh, regain its range of motion and your, your muscles in your foot can uh, regain their strength as well. So again, if you, if you go back to what we said earlier about uh, plantar fasciosis with the ligaments, with the, uh, with the uh, connective tissue getting all jumbled up, uh, stretching that foot and walking in a normal uh, biomechanical way can lengthen these, uh, these ligaments, these uh, tendons, and, have, and, and cause them to run back in their normal direction causing less discomfort. Uh, I know for myself, um, this past summer I had plantar fasciosis and it was, it was pretty bad. Um, I gave myself a good day and a half rest and on the second day I went back up and I, and I ran up uh, Mount Sai uh, in the Pacific Northwest and 
about a mile, I, I was feeling discomfort on the heel for about a mile. And then after a mile, now I was walking really carefully, very gingerly, but going up, uh, up Mount Sai, a mile into the hike, uh, I could, the pain just completely disappeared. And I was bas basically, uh, speed walking the whole way up and uh, I made it up in about an hour and a half. So again, lengthening the foot, uh, walking on it. I don't recommend you go and hike Mount Sai, um, but I know for myself, because I know my body, I, I, I listened to it very carefully, and I knew that if after a mile I would, I felt more discomfort or the pain got worse, and I would definitely walk back down. But like I said, it, it just completely disappeared, and then after that, I didn't feel the pain again, and about three days later, I went back up Mount Sai and didn't feel a thing. So again, some of the treatment for plantar fasciosis you know, strengthen the foot muscles by walking barefoot or walking on a shoe that doesn't have a huge cushion. This allows your foot to walk in its normal anatomical uh, way, the way it's been designed. Okay, uh, correct your, your your gait, correct the way your, your running form. Okay, make sure that when you're running, you're not running down, your, your, your foot's not pressing down or you're dragging your feet because when you do that, uh, the force that you're creating is is being lost by pushing down. To run forward, you need to push down and back. Okay, this is common physics for uh, for running straight or running uh, in the forward direction. Okay, stretch the soft tissue by walking, massaging it, and be very careful because one of the most over common uh, the uh, common error is uh, overstretching the plantar and creating more stress on the ligament. Or on the uh, on the collagen fibers, so be safe when you run out. Be careful. Listen to your body. 